Well, I'm going to close with what we presented in detail last year, and that was a study uh, that Paolo and I with collaborators did a long time ago, but only little by little got completed and eventually we published. Uh, and that was finding an animal model. So it was HHD6, and this, in this case it's A, it should have been on the slide, uh, as is it a, a co can it be a factor that augments progression in HIV infected people when there's double infection? And so we, this was the background argument. Uh, I thought that Paulo had gathered this together, but w or in those, as the years went by, I, we were both aware of most of this. The primary tropism for CD4 T cells and thymocytes, both in vitro, that came from our work, and in vivo, that came from Takahashi uh, paper, and then an accelerated killing of CD4 T cell cultures with co-infection, which we reported in Nature in the late 80s. Barbara Emsley, who was a postdoctoral with me in that time also, showed in a paper in EMBO, the third bullet, that there can be transactivation by herpes 6 of the HIV LTR, making more HIV express. There's an increase in inflammatory cytokines, including TNF-alpha and IL-1 beta, and that was Louis Flamand, um, who I notice is here, with a significant weight reduction from when he was a postdoctoral. <laughs> Food's not very good in Canada. So that was a paper in the early 90s. And what's the importance of inflammatory cytokines? You can, a latent infected cell with HIV, with no viral gene expression, no activation of the cell, when those latently infected, you may have heard that we don't cure HIV because of latency, because it, there's a random integration of HIV proviruses. In some of those cells, um, are provirus integration in regions where there's no expression, and those cells escape. The, the cells aren't activated by any antigens, and they escape from the immune system, uh, and then they migrate to different foci in the body where there may be inflammatory cytokines from another infection, from whatever. And you, in the presence of those inflammatory cytokines, you activate the T cells and you promote the expression of CCR5 on nearby cells and so you augment HIV uh, spread. All of you probably read, uh, they don't like the word at NIH disaster, I believe it was a disaster, the recent failed vaccine trials. I call it a disaster because you could predict failure of those trials before they started easily. But also, on top of that, there was an increase in infection of the vaccinees. Wow, that's bad. But how did that happen? They used adenovirus as a delivery system. And the people in Africa were about 80% adenovirus positive. So you put the vector in, what do you do? You activate T cells, you promote more CCR5, you spread virus infection or you become more susceptible to a new infection because you have more cells with more molecules of CCR5 on their surface and much greater infectability as well as disease progression. So the induction of inflammatory cytokines by any virus in association with HIV is bad. Um, I don't remember this paper. I probably wasn't following the literature that Paulo grabbed this virology paper I will not pronounce that name well, but Sigskowski et al. Uh, enhancement by HIV of HHV6, so this kind of presumed vicious circle, I'm sure this is in vitro. And then uh, we re reported with Paulo that, that you can induce CD4 in CD8 T cells with herpes 6 as well as in NK and in gamma delta T cells, making them targets for HIV. Well, then there was also evidence in vivo and look at, look at the middle one, active widespread infection in terminal AIDS patients, um, association between early acquisition of herpes 6 and rapid HIV disease progression in infants, and the frequent isolation of variant A in early symptomatic HIV disease. So there were a number of reasons. So the approaches that we argued about, how can we really demonstrate this? is one, a temporal association between in vivo replication and progression. That wouldn't prove anything. It would be an association, right? You can't say it's playing a role. It correlates. 
you could also argue that progression with HIV leads to more herpes 6. And you, you know, you argue the opposite. So that doesn't prove a thing. Nice to have, maybe. The second, much more powerful and close to conclusive, the treatment of HIV-infected patients with selective anti-HIV6 drugs and then a model, an animal model with co-infection. And as we talked about in Barcelona, uh, Paulo, Phil Markham, our collaborators at ABL uh, and elsewhere, the macaques displayed human-like sensitivity to infection by herpes 6, the Mestrina type, and this was the experiment. Look at the limited number of animals, though. The same problem in HIV vaccine research. We can't get enough. NIH doesn't make enough primates available, and you have to repeat experiments and repeat experiments, and the years fly by. Never solve the problem of adequate number of primates, and you just, it, all, it, it just is so frustrating. Anyway, this was done with four animals in a group, SIV alone, six alone, and the double. And the conclusions were that co-infection with 6 induced an acceler 6A induced an accelerated progression, early loss of circulating CD4 and CD8 cells. Uh, I changed the slide for the third bullet. And when Paula prepared this, it said they provide the first conclusive in vivo evidence of the role of 6 as a cofactor in the progression of AIDS. I have to say I don't think it's conclusive, so I'll come back to that in a minute. Then, but this is conclusion that nemestrine is a suitable experimental animal model for the studies of interaction between six and primate immune deficiency viruses. And why I don't say, think it's conclusion? Because it needs repeating. When you have four animals in a group, what the heck? You need to see if all you can get is four every time, well, then give me three or four or five people with four animals in a group with the same result uh, if they do the things the same way. I, I can remember an experience. You don't want to get into big, tough um, arguments and debates with other scientists of note. About uh, 20 years ago or so, David Baltimore reported terminal transferase, that enzyme, specific for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And I said, no, it's not specific. We find it in CML and blast crisis, and we have it in three out of three cases. Oh, boy, this was not an easy ride. We both didn't like each other very much. And that was really <laughs> accelerating. <laughs> what happened in the end? CML and blast crisis when it's myeloblastic is never terminal transferase positive. But when it's in lymphoblast crisis, which is more unusual, it's always positive. So we were both right and wrong. And after both of us got about 30 or 40 patients, it was one third were positive. So ever since that moment in time, I don't trust four for four. You know, it's a nice baseball average. But other than baseball, four for four, let me see somebody else get four for four or three for four, and then somebody else get three for four or four for four, and then I'll start believing it. Or else get me 10 monkeys in a group, and then I'll be confident. But look, I, I don't want to be, um, so I said either we need more monkeys or we need a clinical anti-herpes trial before it's really credible. But I doubt it's going to occur anytime soon, unless it's done by a biotech company, perhaps like Epiphany Biosciences, that are supposed to be at this meeting and should be going out and getting money to do that and help the field. Because somebody needs to be doing it, or not just with this problem, but with problems in general. Or find a source of a lot of primates. NIH is not going to provide them if they don't do it with AIDS, except to very limited favorite children. You know, there's. Okay, my time is over, and so are the slides. So it's exactly my time. So I thought, uh, I thought I was going to leave a couple of minutes open because, you know, I don't leave it on any broad conclusion, but I think you have for me anything that I currently think about when I think about herpes 6. Flying through the, the abstracts, a lot of interesting talks. I wish I could be here for all of it, um, but I'll come in and out and hear, hear some of it. Um, but I, I don't know if Dharm would like this, but I would like if anybody wanted to address any of these things or have a discussion or a debate about any of it. Right. Thanks.